Welcome to Between Heaven and Earth, an internet radio talk show where we help you connect spirit and divine guidance. Lisa Kay, your host, brings you shows that can enhance and transform your life with tips and new ideas for more happiness, abundance, and better relationships. Lisa is an expert on intuition and can show you how to strengthen your inner guidance to empower yourself. Each show is positive and uplifting to inspire your day. Her guest speakers are specialists on self-help, positive thinking, spirituality, and conscious living. Be the best that you can be with Between Heaven and Earth, conscious living for your soul. And angel blessings to everyone. Our show today is called Clairvoyance Myths and Tips. And in this show, we're going to expose the myths around clairvoyance and give you tips on how to develop your clairvoyant ability. So let's start with what clairvoyance is. Most people associate the word clairvoyance with someone who is psychic. People often think the word describes an ability to perceive the future or to mysteriously know things through ESP or extra sensory perception. But this is, this is really a very broad sense of the word. If you do a little psychic development in those terms, you're going to find that clairvoyance is the ability to pick up messages through images or pictures. And the word clairvoyance comes from the French words clair, meaning clear, and voir, or voir, which is to see, clairvoyance. So literally, clairvoyance means clear seeing. And I'm not really quite sure how uh, it started to get, be applied in, in uh, the psychic phenomenon, but um, it's, it's often used. So in general, we pick up intuitive and psychic messages through our senses, and our psychic senses mirror our five physical senses. And our psychic sense of sight is another way that we receive our intuitive or our psychic messages in our mind's eye. And there are a few ways you can receive messages clairvoyantly. Um, it may not exactly always be in your mind's eye, and we're going to talk about that. So let's talk about the different ways you can get your clairvoyant messages or messages through images. So the first thing is that you can see things phys physically. So it's actual physical seeing. That means you can see this uh, psychic phenomenon with your physical eyes outside of your body. And this might be seeing spirits such as ghosts, which is a ghost is defined as a spirit of a deceased person. Or you might be able to see auras, clairvoyantly see auras, which is seeing the energetic field of a person around their body. Or you might see a sign, which is something physical that might have special meaning for you. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Now, seeing spirits or ghosts is very rare. When I first started studying intuition and psychic phenomenon, I thought that was the coolest thing. I'd, I wanted to see what it was that people saw in terms of spirits or ghosts, if you believe in that, and I do. Um, but seeing them outside of you is actually both very rare in a person who is able to do it, and it's just generally rare for anybody. So don't feel badly that you're not seeing psychic things outside of you. It's just not that common. Now, I personally have only seen a spirit once, and what I saw was my grandfather-in-law. And briefly, I saw him as a full figure from head to toe, and I could describe him. And I, I described him to my, my mother-in-law, was her father. And I said, I described the, what he looked like and the pajamas he was wearing when I saw him. And she told me that those were the pajamas that she made for him before he died, but he never got to wear. So that was kind of cool because obviously he was sort of sending a message that, you know, he's wearing them now. But this was a one-time incident. It was a one-time thing. I haven't seen spirits um, with my physical eyes since. Now, I don't know whether it was because um, when I did see him, it was in another country. It was actually in Indonesia, uh, where my in-laws are from. And Indonesia is a very mystical place. 
Uh, but I, you know, I haven't seen seen it since. Indonesia is really cool because everybody there believes in metaphysics and in spirit. So it's uh, maybe that had something to do with it. And now, seeing images in your mind's eye is another way you can receive messages clairvoyantly. This is the most common way people receive visions intuitively. And in fact, this is how most mediums uh, who see spirits of people of the past actually see those spirits. It's usually inside their mind's eye. Now, the problem is that if you receive a, a psychic message in your mind's eye, you often confuse it or mistake it for your imagination. And that's one of the things that a lot of people say, how can I tell the difference between my imagination and a, a true message um, or a true, uh, you know, as uh, clairvoyant image? Uh, well, one thing you should remember is that your imagination is the doorway to your subconscious, which is where you receive your psychic and intu intuitive messages. And there are many ways that you can tell whether it's real or not, one of the ways certainly is that uh, it gets validated, just as mine was that um, I saw something, I saw my grandfather-in-law, and uh, you know, I certainly didn't know that what I saw in terms of his wearing pajamas was um, the ones that were made for him before he passed. So that was you know, that was some sort of validation. Um, so that's one way. Another way is to get some validation from an image that you've seen and with, uh, regarding somebody that they couldn't have known uh, what that image, what, what that image was. And I'll give you an example. Um, you know, a lot of people do ask me, you know, how do you know whether it was clairvoyance or whether you're you're actually seeing someone who or getting messages from someone who's passed and this is a little off topic but since I'm kind of going down that road I'll I'll talk to you about it um I had gotten an image for uh someone who's this was uh, I believe it was her her father and I was describing a picture of him and what he was wearing and um how he was standing and what he and and the angle and all that and and his clothes and the hat and all this and she didn't know anything about the picture uh so she couldn't validate it but she did validate it later apparently her brother um has the photograph so of her dad so that that's a, a validation now let's move on uh the last way you can receive messages through sight is to see something outside of you which might have special meaning it might be a sign or a symbol now, for example, uh, one day when I was driving, I was asking for assurance that my angels and my guides were with me, and then a car rushed past me, and on the license plate of that car that rushed past was the word faith, F-A-I-T-H. So that was a, a, my sign from them to have faith that they were there, because I had asked the question, and remember we talked about that, if you ask a question, you get an, an intuitive response quickly, you just have to know to look for it. And, um, I asked, you know, um, I asked, are they where there with me? And they showed me the word faith. So that's another way that you can, uh, get a message. So when I was younger, I never considered myself naturally clairvoyant. In fact, I always thought that I couldn't see anything psychically. And for years, even my meditations were black they were blank. And most of my visual psychic messages were received in dreams or in a dream state, but I couldn't make it happen when I wanted. Um, and over the years of developing my intuitive abilities, I have now become clairvoyant and I can receive very detailed images in my mind's eye and give me psychic messages that are validated. And I'm going to help you today. We're going to go through that in our show on some of the things you can do to help develop your clairvoyance. And we're going to go over myths and tips. Uh, and so this is somewhat of an instructional show. Now, one of the keys to developing my clairvoyance is that I had to allow myself to be aware of images in my mind. And I don't know that everybody is aware. I, I do know that, and you might be, feel this way, um, a lot of people don't think they have any images in their mind. Like I didn't think I had any images in my mind. Uh, and I think unless uh, you don't have the, you know, the sense of sight, which certainly some people don't have the sense of sight, um, 
I think most people who do, who are seeing can have images in their mind. Uh, if if you struggle with this and it makes you crazy, don't worry about it because I know it makes some people crazy. But I didn't think that I could see things in my mind and I started to learn how to do that. And I actually was seeing things in my mind. I just uh, wasn't paying attention. So I had to allow myself to be aware of these images that are in my mind. And at the same time, I needed to practice creating images in my mind and both of these things help me develop my clairvoyance from the very beginning where I just received maybe a rare, a random clairvoyant image, like I said in my dreams, uh, to be able to receive clairvoyant messages at will when I'm awake. Uh, and that's all part of you know the being able to make your intuition and psychic abilities happen when you want them to happen. I used to think that my mind was always blank. And that meditation, again, for me, was a difficult thing. Um, now, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about meditation when we come back from the break. But you might be feeling, too, that you don't have this you know, ability to see images. I always say that, well, if you can, if you can replicate words like the word cat, um, you should be able to see things in your mind. Um, I find that very interesting. I'm, uh, that's why I studied psychology. I just, I'm more, very, I'm very curious. I want to know how people think and why they think the way they do just out of, um, curiosity of thinking, well, people can think differently than me. And I find it interesting that a lot of people have difficulty with, uh, seeing images in their mind. I, I, I guess that I don't feel, I can understand it because I didn't feel that way either, but I was able to develop it. I think you can as well. So when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit about meditation. We're going to go over how uh, these messages come up. And we're going to go start talking about the myths and tips of clairvoyance. We'll be right back. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor, host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. And we're back. 
This is Lisa Kay, and you are listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio. And we're on the Ohm Times Radio Network. So glad to be here. And today we're talking about clairvoyance, myths and tips. Tips. Uh, and again, clairvoyance is receiving your intuitive messages or your psychic messages through images, through pictures. And I wanted to, I actually wrote an article about this and we covered some similar material. But the reason why I wanted to do this is because I found that people, uh, when they're trying to develop their intuition or trying to develop their psychic abilities, that they, um, and you might have run into this yourself, say, oh, I can't see anything, you know, I don't, and, and it's, sometimes it's very disappointing because, when other people are practicing with you or other people are telling you about their intuitive experiences or their maybe even their meditation experiences um it it's frustrating because it's like because you hear all these wonderful things about what they're seeing and all this detail and you don't you feel like you don't get anything and that's the way i felt uh in fact when i was um when i I w- when I was in college, I meditated and I had joined a meditation group and we all sat down um, and to meditate. And now I've been meditating since I was 14. I learned how to do uh, TM and that was like a mantra meditation. And so I thought I was really good at it. So I sat down to meditate and we actually sat down and uh, this was when I was in college and they had a, a really nice little planetarium. It was a beautiful um round room with a dome inside it and with offset lighting and there was no chairs in there so we could sit in there it was really kind of a nice space to meditate in and there were people sitting on cushions or lying down and so I sat down and you know did, on the Indian style sat down I can't do lotus but I sat down on the floor and they dimmed the lights and they said okay we're going to get ready to meditate so They started out with this little guided meditation to get us into it, you know, breathe and relax and follow your breath and, you know, and then now you can go into whatever meditation you would like to do. And I'm here sitting, oh, yes, I know this. I I do this all the time. I do it every day and I've been doing it since I was a teenager. So I sat and I did my mantra meditation and uh, it went on for about 20 minutes and did my mantra, kept going back to my mantra, and it was, uh, you know, the usual, black. And when we came out of it and they turned the lights on and people were starting to come back out of it, um, you know, our meditation guide was saying, okay, so how was that? What did you think? And people were like, wow, that was awesome. That was amazing. I saw all kinds of colors. I went to another world. It was just mind-blowing, and I was so disappointed because I didn't see anything. I saw black. So um, that was as far as images, you know, my mind was, I what I realized was that, and, you know, I'll talk about this, is that I was actually being too good, good at meditating. So let's talk a little bit about meditation. I discovered this as I was... Uh, learning more over the years how to meditate, what meditation is all about, the science behind meditation. Um, as I told you, I was a psychobiology student, so I always wanted to know what's going on. And, and um, I discovered what it, how it works and what it's about and, and what you should be doing. And meditation, for, first of all, meditation is one of the best ways to develop your intuition, develop your psychic skills, because it, um, your psychic abilities, your messages come through your mind. That's how you're aware of them. And meditation is a way to help quiet your mind, control your mind. It's a way to notice what's going on in your mind and not allow the inner chatter, the judgment um, to get in the way so that you can hear all the different pieces that are coming up from your subconscious, from your your intuitive side or, your, or where you're getting your, your psychic messages from. So... Again, when I, when I used to meditate, I would practice on focusing on the repetition of the mantra, which is just a word or a phrase, and I just had one word, and I was really good. I was, uh, I was very disciplined at it, and I would push out any thoughts that would pop up in my mind, and I'd come back to the mantra, 
said it over and over again. And as time went by, you know, I, in, in doing my uh, research and my studies um, in psychic development, psychic senses, I found out that the alpha state that your mind goes into when you meditate is that's the beginning of where you start to receive your psychic messages. And when you go into the theta state, which is where you're aware, but you're not asleep, um, is the most powerful part of being in that meditative state. Now, what I would do is that when these thoughts would pop up randomly in this alpha state that I was in, I would push them away and I would say, oh, I got to go back to this mantra. I got to go back to this word that I'm repeating. And I would pop right out of alpha state and go back into beta, not theta, but beta. And that's the awake state. So I'd wake myself up. And that was not a good thing. But what I did discover was that the thoughts that were coming up in that alpha state, and that state is like, you know, when you're sitting in front of the TV and you're kind of half aware, aware of it, you're sort of dozing, but or you're daydreaming. That's the alpha state. We all know what it is. Um, and the what I would do was I'd start to slip into that restful, peaceful state. Things would pop up in my head, not just random thoughts, but they, um, there were also little pictures that would show up in there. And I pushed those away. I pushed them out of my mind and so that I could go back to focusing on the mantra. So I discovered that what I was doing was I was actually getting out of meditation and I was, um, I was thwarting. I was actually kiboshing what I should, was supposed to be doing. So meditation is not supposed to be pushing those thoughts out, but rather just to let them go by. So it's okay to have the thought come up, but to let it go. So now oftentimes what we do when we meditate is a thought will come up. Oh, I forgot to put bacon on the list, on the shopping list. I have to do that. Oh, and then, then you start thinking about all the things that you that you need to do. Uh, what else needs to go on the list? Oh, and um, yeah, and then I left that dish in the, uh, you know, so then it, in the, you know, and I have to wash the dishes. And so you start thinking of other things that you allow your mind to start following all those thoughts, what you need to do is let them go. It's like, oh, bacon. Okay, bacon, I see that, I notice it, and let it go. Didn't put it on the list, let it go. Come back to the mantra, or come back to your breathing, or, or if you're do, following a guided meditation. So once I realized this, that I have to let those images pop up, or the thoughts, or whatever it might be, um, what you do is you notice it, and then you let it go. So I noticed an image and I let it go. Uh, and when I realized this, I noticed that um, some of the, those images were kind of interesting. <laughs> they, you know, once I would see a window or I'd see sort of... One time I saw this um, sort of... Uh, this Im It was like colored little dots, but they were in the shape of a dog. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Um, but I didn't hold on to it, and that's really important to stay in your meditation. So that's how I began to notice images that forms spontaneously inside my mind, in my mind's eye. And that's how we get our psychic messages. That's how we get our intuitive messages. They pop up and they float by. And if, we're, if we are too busy trying to get back to that mantra, get back to meditating, we actually don't even notice them. We don't pay attention to them. We'll miss them. So that's why meditation is really, really good for getting your mind into the proper state for um, noticing your intuitive pop-ups, what I call that, or, or I call them, you know, our clairvoyant pop-ups or the images that pop up. Now, when I work with my students, again, there, there's often confusion over what is seeing in your mind is. So let's start talking about the myths because I think that'll help you get over... Um, you know, uh, misconceptions and maybe things that might help you. So let's do um, the first one. So again, there's confusion. People have told me this all the time. Uh, my students always seem to run into this. What does seeing in your mind's eye mean for people? Um, this is myth number one. Claire, this is the myth, okay? Clairvoyant images are seen outside the body, and they're in full technicolor, high-definition detail. Okay, that, that's, that's myth number one. So 
again, as I said before, oftentimes the images are not in your mind's eye. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what mind's eye is. And that they're not always uh, in full technicolor high definition detail. That's the myth. So there, there are really two myths here. Um, for most people who receive messages clairvoyantly, they, quote, see them in their mind's eye. And that's the same place where your imagination creates images. Now, remember, these are not images that are outside of you. They're, it's inside your mind. Um, and if you can write words, we all learn how to write. If you can imagine what your name looks like when you recognize it, you know the letters. My name is Lisa, so I say C-L-I-S-A, and I can see those letters in my mind. Um, I can picture them. Then that's the same place where your intuitive messages come up. Now, another misconception is that clairvoyant images are highly detailed and elaborate. That's a big one that I find uh, people don't, they don't, they say, oh, well, I don't see anything. Well, did um, you saw nothing? Well, I, you know, I saw a blob or I saw, a, you know, a piece of something. And so, so they feel that that's not, they're not getting a clairvoyant image. Now, Clairvoyant images are very rarely highly detailed um, when you're first starting out. Uh, you can develop and get them to be highly detailed, but they pop up so fast that we don't even notice. When I was trying to, uh, when I was developing my ability to connect to spirit and, and do mediumship, the first thing that I would get as an image was uh, hair color. That's it. Um, and, but, so the nice thing was that it, turned out to be right, but that's all I got. I didn't see all the detail. I didn't see all the um, pieces that people expect. So clairvoyant images are not detailed and elaborate. They're just in pieces. So when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, tip one that goes along with myth one. We'll be right back. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, my name is Monica and I'm the host of Co-Creating Now. Give yourself an opportunity to connect with your all-knowing higher self and manifest joy, love, and peace together every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio. And we are talking about clairvoyance and getting into the moving from the realm of intuition into the psychic ability realm. And I wanted to take a moment to, to offer up to you a way to develop your intuition and become psychic. So I am offering a develop your intuition level two. This is an advanced intuition and psychic development class. It's online and so wherever you are in the world, you can come and see this. You can work uh, on developing your 
your intuitive ability. So if you feel you've got some intuition or you're out there kind of, um, you've already done a little bit of work and you want to get into the nitty gritty of it, you want to learn how to get answers instantly through pictures um, or through a name or a photograph, this course is going to teach you how to do it. And this workshop is geared towards those who want to go to the next level in developing their intuitive and psychic skills. Now, you don't have to take my level one. You could just take this. It, it's really, um, it's not based on level one in terms of having you know, being a prerequisite. You can still take this if you haven't done that. And this level will include advanced techniques. It's going to develop your skills. Uh, if you want to go out and do readings for other people, at the professional level, I teach you how to do that. But again, you can still attend if you don't want to be a professional. In fact, that's how I started. I didn't want to be professional. I, I didn't. This was the last thing I ever thought I would do would be to do intuitive readings for other people. Uh, but I ended up doing it. But the reason why I studied is because I wanted to get to the point where I could do readings and get answers and information intuitively in an instant and get detailed information. And I go through that. Now, to get to the next level, you need to learn some techniques. And I learn those step by step. I learn them um, through studying with many different teachers and actually going out there and doing it. I've done over um, hundreds, of, oh, actually over 500 readings, uh, probably close to 600 now or maybe even more. And through my experience and through my studies, I learned all these really cool techniques. I learned how to actually use tools, divination tools, do remote viewing, which means you can go out and um, in your seat, you can go and see someone else's or another place in the world. doesn't matter where it is. Somebody go into another house. You could go into um, another city. Do, using your clairvoyance, uh, using your ability intuitively to do what they call remote viewing. Uh, I learned it, and I'll teach you that. I'm going to teach you how to you how to do, say, um, medical intuition, which is really not to diagnose. It's, that's not what it's about. It's really to get an idea of what's going on in your body or someone else's body uh, energetically, which gives some hint to what's happening physically. Again, we don't do any diagnosing. We just we just get a sense of what's happening metaphysically in people's energy. I also teach about house blessings and house clearings, how to clear the energy in your house, how to clear your energy, how to shield. In fact, I got a question last night on the um, on one of our development circle calls about how do you do that, and I explain that all in the course many, many different ways. As I mentioned earlier, how to get information, psychic and intuitive information from just a name. I use that all the time. It blows people away uh, when they ask me, oh, you know, well, tell me about so-and-so, my 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 boyfriend, my husband, my friend, and I'll say, well, just give me their first name. That's all I need, and I can tell you all about them. I can tell you all about their personality. I can tell you about uh, how they live their lives and so on. Um, or a photograph. You can get lots of information that way. And I teach you how to do all of that in this class. I teach you how to scan timelines so you can read the future or the past, yours or someone else's. Uh, we go into evidential mediumship, which will help teach you how to connect to past loved ones and receive clear evidence that they're still around. I teach that um, to you in the course. And I also, as a bonus, I teach you how to get your spiritual business started, how to get it ramped up and noticed. And this is an added course. It's integrated within it, and it's called How to Start Your Spiritual Business. And you get it as a bonus within this class. And you get, But you also get these business techniques that you can apply to any small business Plus, I teach you how to do internet marketing and how to leverage technology and the web for your business. And that helps you get out there and be known. Best way to and how to build your client list. So we do all that in the course, and the course is coming June 29th. It's online. And you can take it everywhere and anywhere. We had from our last, from our level one class that we just uh have we just started going uh we got a bunch of people from all over the world uh denmark um is copenhagen we in uh, copenhagen denmark we have people from australia we had people from listening to the videos from croatia israel singapore canada 
all over the U.S., uh, you name it. It was really exciting. So if you want to take the course, it's there for you. It's coming June 29th. What you can do is go to my website, lmk88.com, and sign up for my newsletter, and you will be notified when um, how to sign up if you want to take it. So that's the next big thing I'm doing, and very excited about it. We've got a lot of good things coming out. So even if you don't want to take the class, I would encourage you to go to my website and sign up for my newsletter uh, because when you do sign up, you will get a free ebook on how to develop your intuition and um, 16 free exercises on how to, how to, do, uh, how to do, do intuition practices, exercises. They're very easy. You can do them by yourself. And they're similar to what we're talking about here. So let's move on. Let's go on to, we were going over the myths and tips of clairvoyance, which is the ability to pick up your intuitive messages through vision or images. So this is tip number one. We did myth number one, which is clairvoyant images are seen outside the body and are in full technicolor detail and high def. Uh, That is a myth. They're not always seen outside of you and they're not always in full technicolor or, you know, there are lots of detail. Actually, a lot of, um, a lot of the images that you do get intuitively tend to be piecemeal. You know, you might see an outline of a car. You might see um, a color. You might see a flash of light. Uh, you might see trees. But the trees aren't very detailed. So the tip number one, the images that you see, again, they're not in full detail and they may not be complete. So one of the way you might, and I, as I was saying earlier, um, I saw hair color. Uh, I, you might not be able to see the face, uh, but you might be able to say, see the hair shape and style. And the images are, again, just piecemeal. And many times what you remember is only part of the image. But if you try to remember more of the image, you get to realize that there's a lot more detail there than you originally saw. So when you start out, I tell people, when people say, oh, I, I, you know, I saw a little girl. Okay. And then of course they want to know, well, is that a hit? Did I get it right? Um, And, and if it is a hit and there was a girl that whatever exercise we're doing, um, then I'll tell them to go back and say, okay, recall that image in your mind. And see what you remember. What was the little girl wearing? What color was her hair? Uh, can you see what the, could you remember what was on her feet? Did she wear shoes? Where was she standing? How tall was she? And when I do that, people are surprised that there is actually more information there that, you know, when we see an image that pops up very quickly, um, we recognize that, you know, that the mind picks up a lot of information, but what we consciously understand and know uh, is, you know, the broad picture. Um, and then the rest of the information goes subconsciously and it gets stored in our memory, but we're not aware. We have to bring it back. I was, uh, actually, I was riding in the car with a friend and, um, and I realized this, I was, uh, one of those, again, those mind things. It's like how people's minds work. It's very interesting. And we were driving down a highway at night and up in the country. So it was very dark and we came up on, um, an accident and we actually, uh, since it was late at night, there were, were not a whole lot of cars around. So we could, we ended up driving by it relatively quickly. Uh, but they had lights up, I guess, you know, the, the emergency responders put lights up to see what they were doing. And we drove by it relatively quickly. And my friend said, um, oh, the car must have uh, rolled over. And I said, really? Why? Because it was sitting upright. And he said, well, the glass in the window was all, you know, broken out. And, um, you know, on, on, on the windows where it seemed like it had rolled over. And uh, I was really, wow, you saw that. And what that made me realize is that we pick up in a flash information that we are not always aware of. And I wasn't aware of it. Um, but my friend, you know, recalled in their mind what they saw and, and then started to put some pieces together. Now, we do the same thing with our clairvoyant messages with those 
things that pop up in her head that you'll find that there are a lot of things that uh, pop up in her head as images and we can get a lot more detail out of it if we either recall it um, or go back to what I say. I say go go back to the energy of it and uh, and then you'll get more information and which can be validated, uh, which is really exciting. So that's part of the whole development process. Okay, let's go over myth number two. We have time for myth number two before our our next break. So myth number two, clairvoyance is something you're born with and not developed. Either you have it or you don't. And as you know, we just talked about how I develop mine, my clairvoyance. But um, I do, and a lot of people ask this, I'm sure this might be your question, is this ability, is intuitive or psychic ability something you're born with? Um, and that some people are born with it and some people are not. And I don't believe that you're not, nobody's born. Um, I don't believe that you, there are people that don't have it. I think we all have it to a certain degree, a certain level, uh, and that you can develop it. It's, um, it's probably like most other skills. If you want to learn how to drive a car, it, we all have, most of us have the ability to, and just look at all the people who are out on the road driving. Uh, if you want to learn how to write, most of us learn how to write. And most of us learn how to read. Um, you can learn how to do that too. You can learn how to ride a bike. You can learn how to develop your clairvoyance. Again, if you're seeing a seeing person, uh, then you should be able to develop your clairvoyance. And my students have heard me say this all, many, many times. Most of us can see, feel, hear, smell, and taste. But you don't classify yourself as just a seeing person or just a hearing person. So why would you classify yourself as just a clairvoyant? Um, you could do all these different things. Uh, you can be clairvoyant, clairaudient, hear your messages, see, feel, hear them all together. So we're going to come back and get into tip number two and finish out our myths and tips after the break. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on The Irreverent Therapist Show. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, mediumship messages and musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. A Conscious Lifestyle for a Mindful Life 
Om Times Radio, I Om FM. And welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay. You're listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio, and we're talking about clairvoyance. And I wanted to let you know um, that I am always online most of the time. I'm a I'm a techie at heart. Uh, I actually used to. I started out my life as a programmer. I was a computer programmer. I bet a lot of you may not have known that. <laughs> and uh, I love it. I loved it. Uh, I still love it. I still tinker around. Um, and so I like to, I love the technology and I like to be connected all the time and I love to be connected to you. So if you want to say hello, I'd love, I invite you to come over to my website and, uh, and just go to the contact page and there's a little form there. You could fill it out and it sends a message to me Im- immediately and uh, just say hi send and send me an email you can go to my website lmk88.com and um, the story behind that <laughs> website address is i've had it for a long time uh, over a decade and it started out as a personal url um, but those are my initials and i love the number 88 so lmk88.com just go and say hi um and i'm on facebook and actually the show has its own facebook page it's facebook.com slash between heaven and earth and you can go over there and um post say hello uh we also announce the shows over there so you'll see that okay so let's go back to where we i think we're up to tip Two with along with myth two. Myth two is that um, you can't develop clairvoyance. That's the myth. You can uh, doesn't mean just because y- you get your messages mostly through feeling doesn't mean you can't develop your clairvoyance. And you can. So let's do tip number two. So in the beginning, when I developed my own t- intuitive skills, I did not, as I told you, didn't receive images in- as intuitive messages. I always thought that uh, being clairvoyant would be so awesome. And I, through intuition development techniques, I became very clairvoyant. So how is this done, you're wondering? I know that. Well, first, I'm going to tell you how to do it. This is the, the secret. Uh, the first is that you have to believe you can do it because hopefully you're a seeing person. And if you can see, you can you have images. Your mind is processing them all the time because you're seeing. So what you can do is practice noticing images in your mind, just to, as we mentioned earlier, and even creating them through your imagination. Uh, you And when you do that, you'll become more familiar with your, quote, mind's eye, what's in your imagination. You can, if you like to paint or to draw, you can, or if you don't, you can try it. I'm not a good, as I told you, I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm a, uh, a computer person, so I tend to um, be much more logical. And I never really thought I was the artist type. So, but I try to draw, and I try to, um, I've tried to paint, and it's it's kind of fun. So it doesn't matter whether you're an artist or not. You can practice your clairvoyance through creating those pictures. The other thing you can do is you can look at pictures. You can look at paintings, right? If you have a painting, you know, really look. Because I think a lot of times we see pictures and paintings around us. They might be in a magazine, um, in a building, and we don't really look at it. We just go, oh, okay, there's a picture on the wall. So take your time to look at it. Look at the colors. Look at the detail. You might want to go to a museum. Uh, we happen to like to go to museums, my family and I. Um, and, uh, and the good thing about it is that we get to, I get to practice my clairvoyance by developing an eye for things. The bad thing is um, we get really jaded over beautiful things and then, you know, you can't buy those things outside. They're too expensive. But uh, you can go to museums. If you're not into museums, if you want to get a picture book, um, again, a magazine, or you can go somewhere where there's a beautiful view. And... Look, really look at the image. And you can look with what they would say is your heart, which, um, how do you look with your heart? Well, your heart's in your chest. It doesn't have eyeballs. But the way you do it is you do it through your feeling. How does it make you feel? 
one of the things you can do is see whether and notice that does this this picture make me feel good does it make me feel happy does it make me feel repulsed um am i drawn to it and that's important as well when you're looking at a picture with your physical eyes one of the things you can do is close your eyes and then in your mind imagine seeing the picture you, you just saw and i do this with my students as an exercise um and you know people who say they have problems with images, start to, well, they see that. Uh, and that's going to help you become familiar with what is seeing in your mind's eye means to you. Okay, so let's move on to myth number three. Myth three. The, now, again, this is a myth. Uh, experiencing making an image in our imagination is different from a clairvoyant image. And as we talked about it before, it's not. So that's a myth. People expect that a clairvoyant image is going to be strikingly different from what we experience when we are imagining something. I think people see other people do it or they see, you know, psychic mediums and they get all, and they're the, they're, those people are getting amazing information and it's like, wow, they must be seeing something so different from what I see, 3D, holograms. That's not what they're seeing. They're seeing what you see. They just have learned a technique on how to get more information out of it. So an intuitive image or a psychic image is really very similar to an image that you create in your imagination. Now, while you're not making up a clairvoyant image in your mind, it pops up at you, the way a clairvoyant image comes is similar to what you experience and what you, quote, see when you're making up an image in your, in your imagination. And there's also a bit of a misconception of where your, your mind's eye actually is when we start talking about, you know, where's my imagination, where's my mind's eye. Um, it's, you know, your mind's eye isn't actually in a particular place in your head. And even if it was somewhere in your head, which actually it is, I mean, part of it is anyway, um, you know, your, your vision processor is in the back of your head. You wouldn't really even be able to tell. It's not like you can go to the back of your head and say, okay, you know, um, I need to go to my visual centers in, in my brain and, and see what's in there. You can't. So don't worry about where your, your mind's eye actually is. So this is tip number three. Now, again, quite a few of my students tell me they can't create images in their mind's eye. And that's partly, again, uh, because of the d definition of what an image is and where you might think your mind's eye is. So some people have been told that if you close your eyes and you look where your third eye is, which is inside your head, between your eyes up in the middle of your brow, that this is where your cl clairvoyant images reveal themselves. Well, that's not true. You don't have to do it that way. Uh, and now I'm not poo-pooing anybody else's um, techniques or methods. If that worked for you, that's fine. But don't feel that you have to do that. Um, and, you know, for some people, they might find it uncomfortable to try to close your eyes and look at that part of your face or that part of, you know, your brow. Uh, and just as an aside, your, your third eye is, again, it's between your eyebrows uh, in the center of your forehead. And that is a, a, the location of your third eye chakra, which is associated with picking up your visual intuitive messages. So that's part of why people get really locked into that part of their head. Um, you don't have to physically look there or try to look there. So don't, don't get kind of crazy over that. So you experience your intuitive messages again, the same way you, you get, uh, imagine images in your mind. So here, here's an example. You could try this. This is, this is an exercise. Imagine you're standing in front of your home or your house. You can't right, right now you can do well, unless you're driving. Um, but if you have a moment, you can close your eyes and see if you can create an image or remember in your mind, and, you know, this is, would be using your mind's eye, remember what the front of your house looks like or wherever it is you live. If you live in a, an apartment building, can you see or imagine? And now remember, you're not seeing with your eyes. It's all in your mind. So don't worry about what your eyes are doing because it's in your mind. In your mind, is there an image of what the front of your house looks like or your building if you live in an apartment or maybe your front yard? 
That's how clairvoyant images appear in your mind. There's nothing mysterious about how to receive that clairvoyant intuitive message. You know, so so remember that the images are not detailed. They might be pieces of an image just as um, you're, when you try to remember what your house looks like. It might be a piece. You know, you, see, you remember the bushes, you know, where the, the front door is. And that's okay. So if you practice your clairvoyance, you might find that you're receiving intuitive messages through these pictures in your mind. So I think it would be great. You know, go out and have fun with your intuitive messages. You really are clairvoyant. We all are. If I could do it, you could do it. I start out with black. And I got to pictures and practice by going out and noticing images and pictures that you see around you. That's the first way to do it. And pay attention to what you see in detail. The more you notice things outside of you, the better you're going to be able to notice your inner clairvoyant messages. And again, you know, I'd love to know what your thoughts are in receiving images as an intuitive um, message or as a psychic message, and I'd lo- love to hear your feedback on clairvoyance. So, you know, go to my website, lmk88.com, and go to my contact page and send me a message. I'd love to hear. Let's, you know, get a conversation going. I'll, I'm very happy to help you answer your questions and um, and help you out. That's what I'm here for. I'm Lisa Kay, and you've been listening to Between Heaven and Earth, Conscious Living for Your Soul. So tune in next time right here on Ohm Times Radio. Angel blessings to everyone.